loading up this morning for our uh, trip up to Mount Patterson. That one right in the middle with the snow on it. I think it's 11,600 feet, somewhere around there to the summit. Little R3's packed full of gear. There's six of us heading up there. So we're gonna finish getting everything in there, get everybody loaded up and start on the trip. Most of the information that we found out about uh, the trip up to the summit of Mount Patterson, people usually go up the west side and down the east side. But we uh, decided to try to go up the east side and if possible, return back down the west side. So that's where we're heading. You see Mount Patterson area off to the right there. Still a little bit of snow up on the some areas. So shortly after we stopped to open up the gate, I noticed something that looked like it was leaking from the LR3. After checking under the hood, we found the coolant had overflowed from the reservoir tank. The strange thing was the temperature gauge on the dash never got above the middle halfway mark, which is where it always runs. We then hooked up my scanner and found that the coolant temperature was running right around 222 degrees. We set up the scanner so that we can monitor the coolant temp and also manually actuate the cooling fan. By doing this, we seem to be able to keep the temperature down in normal operating range. After running this on the trail for a bit, we found that the temperature stayed good until we stopped. As soon as we stopped and let the engine idle, you could see the temperature climb immediately. Uh, we never let it get above 222, all I had to do was give it a little gas, get the RPMs above 1,000 RPMs, and it would bring the temperature back down. So with that in mind, we were confident to keep going as we could control the temperature to a point. The next issue arose when we approached a large rock in the trail. And we were just kind of curious to see how the LR3 would handle it. So I approached the rock and stopped when the front tire was up against it. I then attempted to crawl over the rock in rock crawl mode, low range and in first gear on the transmission. Unfortunately the LR3 would not move. The engine really wouldn't even rev, only got about 900 to 1000 RPMs. To get over the rock I had to back up and then bump it over. So at that point we knew there was something going on that was affecting the LR3's ability to, to slow crawl or have any low end torque. But we still decided to keep going up the trail and see how far the LR3 could take us. So far nothing was extreme enough to cause us any concern.
last water crossing, the trail continued to get narrower and hooked the side of the mountain. There were areas where the rock had slid above across the trail, making it difficult to actually see where the trail was, and it would almost look like the trail was washed out. so tight, we want to make sure we always head him out if we need to back up or, or turn around. Based on the app that my son had on his phone, this last section is showing as a 22 degree slope. The biggest problem was that it was covered with these large 3 to 4 inch rocks that didn't provide much traction.
eventually, the LR3 lost traction in the loose rock. I was able just to dig the tires down deep enough to keep it from rolling back to assess what to do next. At this point, with the issues we've been having with the LR3, felt it wasn't safe or a good idea to keep going. We were at the 8,600 foot mark. The summit of Mount Patterson is at 11,673, so we still had roughly 3,000 feet in elevation to climb. We could see the top of Mount Patterson from where we got stuck, but we decided to back down. Fortunately, where we got stuck, there was a safe spot to turn around if I backed down the hill about 100 feet. This is where I found out another serious issue with the LR3. As I start backing down the hill, I find the brakes can't hold the LR3 when it's in reverse. Not sure if it's due to the traction control was working hard on this hill climb and heated up the brakes or if there's something else going on with the brakes. But I had to keep bumping it from reverse to neutral to keep it from pushing through the brakes. After backing the LR3 down to where we could safely turn around, we continued back down the trail to find a good spot to stop and have a quick lunch. Yeah. Were you nervous right there before you got out of the car? Uh, you got a look on your face that I didn't see before. Yeah. I was nervous. I think that was That's what it looked like. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the LR2s. 
Imagine your mom. She's worse than you. Oh, yeah. this nice spot next to the creek in a shaded area where the kids to, can get out, walk around, and have a quick sandwich. It's really beautiful there. Let's touch it. Let them climb around the creek a little bit. We've been in the car for so long. It was a nice break. Again, how see how beautiful it is. Did you touch the water? Once we finish our little stop, we spent about 15, 20 minutes here. Water was nice and cold. Then we just returned home and call it a day. And even though we didn't make it to the summit, we all had a good time and already 
are looking forward to our next attempt to make it to the summit. We'll try going up the west side this next time. Once we got home, we ran some tests on the LR3 to try to figure out what's uh, causing some of our issues. And we'll put that together in a separate video. Subscribe and eye out for that video. Thanks for watching.